Hello, it's Jesse here, and we are back working on the Triumph again, and we're going to move on to assembling the transmission here. So, um, we're going to be putting the gears in, the shafts and the gear assemblies in, and then we're going to work on putting the shifting index in here and, in, and actually indexing it so we have neutral in the right, correct location, and we can easily go in and out of every gear. Now, that's very important when we start doing this, we don't just like not do that because when we go to go to ride it we're not gonna have any gears or not have a neutral um, but anyways uh, so stay tuned here while we get ready to do this and um, yeah hope you enjoy so stay tuned okay so here we go we got all the crud and sealant or whatever it was tri bond Honda bond Yamaha bond whatever you want to call it off of here um, and then, well, looking at the case here, where the, it's actually a, a unit motor, of course. They started the unit motor in 63. Before that, it was a separate transmission and uh, separate engine assembly. So, hence the, the pre-unit term. So, anyways, any, we got going on here is there's a little divot here that's been machined out originally from the factory, which allows the index unit to clear stuff in here and shift freely this bearing down here for the lay shaft is in good shape and our fourth gear turns freely and it's very nice and smooth so we're, gonna, we're good with that and then we have the uh, intermediate door cover which has the other bearings in it and the kicker Parts are on the outer side, and there's like two pieces that go here. So we got the one unit here pretty much cleaned up, and uh, this is the bearing end. And then we had to install the the shifting index springs on here yet, which were kind of bent pretty bad when we took this apart. So we went and got new ones. So, anyways, we have it all ready to go here. So. Oh yeah, they weren't just bent bad; they were. War as well. War down a little bit. So we're gonna put the new one in there. It's a, it's a two piece spring. Actually, it's a three piece spring. There's, there's a keeper with two bolts. The first spring it has a radius stand, so that sits up like that. Then the spring that that holds it into gear, and then another spring on the outside that get like a stiffener <clears throat> so we just kind of put all together like a assembly like that and good. then it goes right on there Kind of like so. So uh, stay tuned here. We're going to tighten that down and then we'll get back at it. All right, so we got that uh, tightened down kind of tight. And then there's like little ears we're going to bend up to lock the, the flats on the bolts. So we'll be doing that here in a second. There we go. Okay, so after getting the spring on there, we're gonna put these uh, copper bronze type uh, bushings on here. Thrust yeah. washer. Thrust washer, that's the proper term. So what we did was we put a little bit of grease in here in the bearing just to have like a pre-lube. And then- we Put grease on the backside so that it holds it in place so it don't fall off. And it, it'll dissipate when the oil gets in there anyway. And then we do it to the other one here, and we put that one on the inside of the transmission. Yeah, it might not have needed that much grease, but... This way the bearing's got some lube right away. And then the flat side, of course, goes there's to the... A, there's a pin. Yeah, alignment pin. That's got to go through the hole. Yep. There it is. Okay. 
the grooves there. They'll help uh, get oil into the shaft and, when, the bearing. and the bearing itself because the surface it rides against helps uh, let it lube. Otherwise, if you put the flat side of the to the other way, then it doesn't trans transfer the oil efficiently. So yeah, so next we'll put this uh, cam in here. I'm not sure which teeth get used right now because it engages on this. Yeah. But I just put it on all of it. We don't want to rust in either. Find the well, right. We took it out. <laughs> you gotta find the right spot there and it, it just goes in. Yep, just like that. Like a little puzzle piece. Goes like this. There's nice and greased. Okay. Alright, well, stay tuned here. We'll get ready to put the shafts and gears and this, stuff in. This is the far stop, and this is the other stop. Now, what you'll have here is, if I have this right, this will be first gear, this will be neutral, this will be second, this will be third, and this will be fourth. So, that's how that kind of works. Cool. Alright, so here's the gear units. We have the main shaft, and this is like the output shaft. And then your our lay shaft or second the other shaft, you know. So first, second, third, half of fourth. The other, the other half, half is in. Yeah, the other half is in there. So this is kind of how it goes together, all laid out. We didn't really tear it all apart and break it down because everything looked pretty good when we were taking it apart. Um, but anyways, this is how it goes back in as a group. So anyway, stay tuned here. Exactly fun. Yeah, so he's putting the gears sets in, of course, and he's taking those shift forks, and there's like little followers on there. He's trying to get in that cam. I gotta, I gotta get this one. First, it fell out. This is all right. Yeah, it's got to go into that piece here. There, there it is. Okay, it's in there. That's what it looks like. It's got to stay there now. Yeah, let's look at that again. So that the shift fork has like a little knob on the end of it, like this one does. And what we're seeing there is it's in the cam right now. So and it's lined up with the hole that this pin's got to go. And through. then yeah, the pin has to go through there. This pin. And it has to come through the other one yet. It has to go through them both. So the other one is going to sit right about here and line it, it line it with this one. So. Don't move it. <laughs> All right, keep watching here. Dang. Yeah. This is a bugger, so stay tuned here. All right, so for another attempt here.
That probably won't let me do that. It should though, because this same gear. Probably won't let you go past that gear. No, it won't. Because this one's probably bigger or something. Yeah, it is. Hey, it's been a while since we had one of these together, so. <laughs> anyway, stay tuned here. All right, so we got uh, we got all set up. We need the extra hand there. I had to put the camera down for a minute. But anyways, what we got is we got that 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 piece back there. Yeah. Let me point at it with that. Get over your camera. Okay. Get over your phone. Okay, back here. It's back in this groove. It's right there. That shiny little spot is the same as this shiny little spot. It's, they're identical. Right. Okay. So we got that one in there. I had to hold the cam in a position here, so he could get the that it would hold the back one there. So when he ran in the the counter shaft and put this shift fork in, it all stayed together, and then he was able to slide the this pin here, the shaft here, shift fork shaft here, and into its locking spot that was in the case back there. So now we're ready to, it's kind of a bugger, it's a pain in the butt, and it had to fight it a little while, and it's really kind of hard to describe all that, but um, I think it did pretty good. So anyways, we're gonna move on to putting the, the, the bearing house door here on next. All right, so here is the quadrant for changing the cam that's inside the tra transmission there. So we replaced this spring here because this one was about wore all the way through there. You can see that it's half worn down. And then, anyway, so what we got here is the is information on. This is first up. This little this is first gear stop up here. This little point. And this other point down here and where the arrow is pointing to is fourth gear. And with a leech speed transmission, you need to have this in fourth gear. Yeah, this is a little bit different than like any typical Harley transmission or a Norton transmission. But anyways, under plungers. Right, so this is the leaf spring. This is what makes it a leaf spring uh, transmission. Because in earlier years, down in that little machine surface we talked about a little bit earlier, was actually where the detent was at. A ball detent would come up there and uh, run on this cam. So right now we have the cam sitting on in the position fourth gear for fourth gear. But we're also going to back it up just a little bit like that. So that way when the leaf spring comes in, it comes in and touches this and pushes it and moves it into place and it'll be stopped against it. So that way we verify that we know it'll be in fourth gear. So we're going to push it back there. Then this spring is going to push it. The spring here is going to push it in when we slide that in there. And I'm going to take this quadrant, and once I get it in there, I'm going to lift all the way up. And when I get it within about an eighth of an inch of the end, then I'm going to feel the teeth in there when it's all the way up like this, and I'm going to drop it down to the first tooth that it drops into, and then slide it home. And at that point, it is indexed. It should work with all four gears. So, all right. So let's go ahead. And, so here we're gonna go. Let's go ahead and try it.
over that gear. And I dropped it in. Now I'm going to put a screw in here and a screw in here to hold the cover on. This is just so we can test all four gears. Right. All right, so we put the kick-starting gear, installed it right now. Um, we're going to have to take this back apart because we have to seal it. Um, if you notice that, um, that we didn't put a gasket in here, gaskets didn't happen until 750s came out. So they used like a, a bonding agent between the two surfaces. So we'll use that 518 stuff again, um, probably. So right now we're putting the kicker cover on, and then we're going to see if we got all four gears. If not, we, we'll have to adjust it a little bit. So let's see what happens here. All right, so we're over here on the, I'm over here on this side. We're gonna go and try to test the gears out. So I'm gonna spin the main shaft and the sprocket back here. So to verify if we're in a gear or not. So we're already in fourth. So we're in fourth gear right now. We are in a gear, I can feel it. There's third. This should be a gear. Yep, it's a gear, because I can feel it. Okay, that should be second. Mm. Yep, that's a gear. It's locked. Okay, now I'm going to go down just a little bit. That should be... Oops. That should be somewhere in there. It should be in neutral. How about there? All right. No, that's a gear. Oh, yeah, I went first. That's first. Okay, right there. Okay. Yep, I'm able to hold the sprocket while spinning the main shaft, so that's a neutral. There we go. It's working. There we go. Well, I've got all four gears back. So, so. now we just got to take it apart and put sealer in here. And close it up and put it up. Yeah, because what we did was, like I said before, we we just slapped it together for this real quick and we're gonna pop it back apart, do this all over again, <laughs> and then glue it and make sure we do it again. Also, while sliding this in, we gotta make sure we can see that that, that cam moves just a little bit with that spring as it puts it in the last quarter inch or so. So about an eighth inch. Eighth about yeah, okay. So quarter to eighth of an inch of a and he's feeling for it to go into the next tooth, like he was saying. Yeah, drop it off the roof right into the first tooth that it comes into. You drop it into that. All right, well, stay tuned here. All right, so just to clear up a few things here with using the manual here that we used when we were putting this transmission together. Of course, we talked about this picture here, um, having making sure we're at the fourth gear was at the bottom there. Um, it also shows, there's plenty of ways you can put this together, but it also shows this guy in this picture here um, putting it in one-handed. Uh, that was almost impossible for us to do that. <laughs> I suppose it's under talent and years of doing it, you're really good at doing it that way, but it didn't work out very well for us. Um, so we ended up doing it the way we did. Struggled a little bit. It is what it is. And uh, anyway, um, other thing is about this, the leaf spring. Um, the leaf spring transmissions were only for 71s and 72s because in 1973 they put the plunger back in. I can't find the. Yeah, they put the plunger back in, in here and got removed the leaf springs. So um, this is kind of like a 71, 72 walkthrough only. But you know the transmissions are all the same, pretty much. But. Uh, just little details here and there. I suppose the plunger one would be easier to put together um, if it was an older one or a newer one, like 73 and newer. Um, because, like I said in a lot of my other videos, that uh, 71 was kind of the first year of of an optional five speed, which they actually jammed five gears in there. So a total of 10 gears inside there. And then some race bikes, of course, they actually got six gears in there. So that means 12 gears were inside there. They're really narrow, but they all fit inside there. We had a heck of a time with just four speed. So <laughs> anyway, uh, we made sure that we had that the cam lined up like we were talking. And uh, yeah, just make sure you read a, get a manual when you go to put this stuff together. It's kind of all there. It's a little bit easier to, to kind of like, hopefully we made it easier in this video, but um if not, uh, 
trial and error, you know, and that's kind of how we got it too, in a way. So, anyway, stay tuned for more stuff coming on here and in this video, and be about done here in a minute. All right, so we're getting ready to take this uh, this cover off here, and uh, we're gonna put some 518 Loctite uh, sealant in here. And like I said before, there's no gasket here. Well, there was no gaskets here from everything I've found in research, parts books, um, manuals, all that stuff. And we even looked down some older parts books from like the early 60s and 50s and there still was no gasket mentioned for back here. Now, and also in, in retrospect of that whole thing, we found out that originally there was no gaskets in the in the timing cover area here either, but we put one in. It's not a big deal. Um, we could put a gasket in, but um, the, the reason why I'm kind of not going to is because what happens when you put gaskets in there for particular, um, the gasket itself actually acts like it creates a gap in here. So then, like on this gasket here, it's a little bit thicker. Yes, it'll help from from leaking and seal, but uh, what happens is we'll end up with more end play in our shafts here. So right now we have some end play the way it is. But um, we'll have even more if we put a gasket in there. So in this gasket here in particular isn't the correct one anyway. This is for a five speed. And actually a 70, about 75 or so, an old and newer. 76. 70, yeah, like 76 even. Um, kind of hard to find a 75 or even a 74 five speed or even a 74 bike in general because um, Triumph was on, on lockout at the factory in 74, so barely any 74s were ever made. And then low production in 75. So anyway, what happened in 75 is they decided to put the shifter on the primary side. They moved it from the right side to the left side. And they were all excited about it. But um, everywhere, other countries and the motorcycles, they were starting to put everything to the left side anyway also. But it goes right through here. The shaft ends up going through here. It would transfer the shifting from being right here across the shaft out to the other side on the primary side. So, but anyway, that's enough of that. We're going to Take this cover off now and then put the sealant on there and put it back together. So stay tuned here. All right, so we're taking this back off now. We're going to be getting ready to seal it. And then we're going to be done with the transmission here soon. It's the goal anyway right now. Two bolts in it, this part. Hole in it. Right. Alright. Well, stay tuned here. I gotta go hold the main shaft from coming forward. So, yeah, there's a chance that this could come out when he goes to pull that cover off. So, I'm gonna pull it against it so it doesn't like pull out. I don't want to take the whole thing apart. I'm going to have to do all the gears and stuff again. <laughs> all right, there we, we go. We've got to make sure this stayed in place. Yeah, we got to make sure that stays in place. Good point. Okay. All right, so stay tuned here. Starting to seal the cover here with some 518 Loctite sealant. I'll start spreading it out here. You see, has it all applied on there? <coughs> we might have to add some more. We never know. Here we go, whatever extra. Of course, we can either wipe off on the outside with a with some solvent and a, and a 
rag or whatever and whatever goes to the inside and extra it'll disappear with the oil but it will it doesn't harden yeah it doesn't harden it hardens once it gets absence of air and this stuff suggested to be used with aluminum anyway so perfect because we're working be on aluminum here cast iron but it's also compatible with yeah aluminum Right. <clears throat> and it won't harden until, so we could leave it here for quite a while. Well, there we go. We got the the cam repositioned with fourth on the bottom, so we're going to be able to put it back together, and hopefully we get it together and set right, and not have to take it apart again. <laughs> so, yeah, let's see what happens here. So, stay tuned. All right, we're putting the cover in. So he's riding that spring down in the bottom to the fourth gear detent there. There it goes. It's starting to move. It yeah, took over there. So then that's where we're seeing it move a little bit as the spring engages. Now he's going to run in and get it closer, like we were talking about, and he's going to run that to the top of the, the roof. And then when it gets to an eighth, I'll work on dropping it into the, the first tooth there. <laughs> All right, so now he's going to find that first tooth. Too much. Okay, there it's got to go in. There it is. All right, now the rest of the way in. All right, then he's going to put a couple bolts in here, and then we'll get moving on to the next part here. We'll check it again. Run them all in. All right, so stay tuned here. All right, we're putting the starter gear in, and then we have uh, a new locking tab to washer. And the tab goes in one of the holes there. There we go. Just like look, just like that. There. Fit one of them. All right, so we're going to have to tighten this up. What we have to do there is we're going to have to mock up the primary so we can get this thing to lock so we can actually torque it. Well, assemble the primary. Yeah, so. So we're going to do two things. Now, at this point, we're done over here until we get the primary in. So we're going to do that, and then we'll come back we, to. We'll we can come back test to, it first. We'll come back to tightening this up and, and continue the video that way, but. Uh, we're also going to document doing the, the primer as well so stay tuned here all right so we're getting ready to lock the the ratchet gear on the kicker over there so i got this tool here um, locking this hub to this to this dampener here so when he goes rotated it'll it'll keep it from turning because we don't have a rear wheel on and we don't have clutches in or top end to keep it turned around so so anyway stay tuned here i got a whole um another video worked on putting this clutch or this uh, primary all together here and this clutch together here so i'll go ahead and look for that one do you find this intriguing so 
Either way, this is a special tool for Norton. It's, it also uh, it also um, uses it's for like these kind of plug things. That I'll show you here in a minute. Anyway, so stay tuned here. That uh, Norton special tool I was talking about here, we used to lock the hub with and the damper with, goes to one of these plugs here. It's specifically designed to fit in that groove really nice so it doesn't mar up or destroy the plug, which a lot of people like to use the wrong tool and gets them all screwed up. So I try to use the proper stuff. I want my stuff to look nice, you know? So let's get back to that transmission. So stay tuned here. All right, torque spec for the kickstart ratchet pinion nut was 45 foot pounds. We got it set for 45 foot pounds, and it's going to go ahead and tighten it down. There you go. So now we just line up one of them tabs there and fold it over on one of the flat parts of the hex nut, of course. That tool out so we can spin it. There's other tools for this, but this one will be fine. There we go. Next, we'll work on putting the kicker cover on and and stuff here. So can't forget this. Oh yeah, we got to make sure we put in the clutch rod. Well, we could push it in from the other side. Either way. Make sure the blue Loctite's all gone. Okay. All right. Stay tuned here. Is it 7 so on this cover here, we got to make sure we have all the hardware holds it on, of course, before we get carried away with putting the kicker cover on, which we'll be doing here in a minute or two. All we got the, yeah, we have all different kinds of stuff here. We got a Phillips in here. We got a Helen in over here. And this is not like us just putting random stuff in. This is how it was when we took it apart. And this, this is, is how the book and that's how the book shows it, too. Um, then we got a bolt down over here. I believe that's it holding this on here. Just see three. Yeah, just the three there. So we're going to work on tor tightening them down. Yeah, the other ones that hold this on are these studs that come through and they actually get held on by the outer cover and sandwiches it all together. So, anyway, we got this one pretty tight with the, with the Phillips there and then the Allen, we got that one tight already. Just gotta make sure we get this one tight. You don't want to come loose. Yeah, really. All right, so we got the 518 on here as well. And we're going to start smoothing it out on here so it makes a good surface and gasket. Covers all that aluminum nice.
Yeah, it's kind of thin over here too, so but it should be enough. No, okay. Get some more on there. Just want it to be covered, I guess. There we go. We've got it pretty good. And we're ready to put the gasket on here. Make sure you get around the holes good, otherwise, it'll leak out the screw. This cover gets a gasket, so I'll go dig that out. No, it don't. This one doesn't? No. Okay. Neither one. Alright, so I guess this doesn't get a gasket. <laughs> I knew the inner one didn't get it one. It could have gotten one if we'd have bought one for it, but it doesn't show it in the books. So we decided to put it together like they did in 71. They had something else, but I don't think 518 was out yet by Loctite in 71. But they used a different Loctite uh, product. It was called... Uh, I think about it for a little bit. I'll tell you what it was. Plastic gasket. Oh, yeah? It's, yeah. It's not available anymore, but it used to be called plastic gasket. And it basically did the same thing. All right. So what we'll do here is we rebound this, the starter so we can get it engaged in the proper spot. And then I'll put it, just slide it right on. First, so, yeah. yeah. So stay tuned. We're going to double check that Allen rent. Allen one over there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, we're ready. To... All right, so now we're ready to install the kicker cover. I'm going to wind this up. Make sure that's all on. Make sure you don't turn the kicker or the shifter. Otherwise, Otherwise then... it flies out. Yeah, these little dent tents that select it. We'll shoot out. I like to hold on to the point here. Okay, here we go. Now you line up the two screw holes. Slam her home. All right, so we run this, this uh, acorn nut on the top, and then there's like a normal lock nut that goes on the bottom. Right here. And then we have a bunch of uh, screws, right screws that go around the outside. They're all different. I think the shortest one went here. Can't remember where the longest one. So they're all Phillips heads. So we'll use the impact driver to lock them down. There we go. Focus works. And then got one up here and one down here. And should be one here. I guess the short one goes here. No? Well, the long one goes here. There's a long one right there. There it is. I don't know. I went to put this one in it. I felt like it uh, goes too far. Yeah. No? Yeah, kinda. Huh. Unless this, unless this is... No, that's rough enough. Yeah, it's gotta go all the right way through. It's gotta be there. They might have put a wrong one there. You never know. More Honda bond there. <laughs> yeah, we didn't clean the screws out, did we? Because it was out. Yeah, so we got the 518 coming out of here. We'll be able to wipe that off here in a minute. Hole. 
All right, so we'll get ready to impact drive them in. So just to give them a little extra tightness. Yeah. It's hard to get a Phillips tight. All right. Yeah, I really can't get on there with a torque wrench because it wants to slip off and stuff, so. Just give it a little extra. All right. And we'll tighten these up. Uh, yeah, as soon as we get the wrench for it. I think it's half. All right, well. Stay tuned here. All right, just tighten them snugly without uh, killing it. Without killing it, yeah. This is just reinforcement for the kicker. Right. So just make sure they're securely tightened down. All right, so now we'll wipe off that excess 518 that's coming, losing out all over. There we go. Looks a lot better than it did before we started tearing the bar already. Yeah. We'll have to clean that up, but. Yeah. But. Yep. All right. Well, that pretty much ends this segment on putting the transmission together. So I hope you like that. And then we'll move moving on to the, the primary. So be, look, be on the lookout for that video coming up. And then, uh, yeah, then we'll be work, working on moving on to putting the rear fender and stuff on. So, exciting stuff happening here on this bike. So, finally getting it back together here. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and we'll uh, see you again soon.